Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to Valheim. Valheim? Yeah, we're uh, we're playing a new game today, or new to us. It's been out for a little while, I think. Um, yeah, so this is a Viking-inspired survival game. Uh, there's a whole main quest line where you explore and you fight monsters and stuff. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to build some buildings. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything you want to say to like intro the game? I can talk uh, about some mechanics in a minute. But any other? Like my first exposure to this game was beating one of these goblins to death with my bare hands, and then picking up the chunks that they drop. Every oh. every good creature drops chunks, and uh, it's very fun. Um, it's not usually this uh, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> we we got raided by a god called Eichthyr right right when uh, we started the stream. So we're going to get raided by monsters for just a couple more minutes, and then we can get to business. Ooh, the, creatures the creatures are calming, calming down. down. Wait, these lizards are called Neck? Yeah. That's ironic. Not, not a great name. Wait, why is it ironic? Because they don't have a neck. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's all... All the neck went right to the name. <laughs> There's none left for the, for the form. Uh, oh, also, it's been a while. We should uh, acknowledge that. Sorry. It's true. We yeah. had busy schedules all through October. Yep. And then finally, when we were going to stream again, it turned out to be Halloween that day. So, sorry. We missed you. We missed each other. That's, Maybe that is the us. most true. And uh, we missed streaming. So, happy to be back. Indeed. Berkeley, you went to our first high school reunion. Yes, I did. You, you did not. I did not. <laughs> that was I, pretty sad. I wanted to, but unfortunately, school waiteth for no man. So... I had to miss it, but it sounded pretty interesting. I was thinking kind of about how I put people in these little boxes based on whatever interactions I've had with them. And uh, I don't know. It's always interesting to see people uh, subvert those expectations. Might be the right way to say that. Mm. So. Yeah, it's interesting seeing people and thinking, oh, you're just an older version of who you were. <laughs> Yeah, and, and not seeing any visible differences. But when I think about myself, like I feel like I've learned a ton and changed in important ways. But probably everyone else looked at me and thought, "Hey, that's just an older version of himself." I don't know. Yeah, you can't really see uh, see everything going on in other people's heads. Berkeley, I don't know if you're watching the stream right now, but. Every 10 seconds, my camera turns 90, oh, not 90, 45 degrees to the left. Oh, why? And uh, I, I have no idea. So I'm going to be unplugging some stuff real quick and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. But uh, hey. in the meantime, please enjoy this automatically generated panoramic view of our, <laughs> <laughs> of our area. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, while you work on that, um, yeah, while you work on that, I'll talk a little bit more about the game. So you start out as a Viking with nothing but a dream and a hope and a prayer and a little raven to guide you. Uh, and then it's kind of like Minecraft. You, you start by just punching trees until you have enough materials to make tools, and then you use those tools to continue collecting resources, uh, monsters attack you, you fight them, you build a base. And the, the main point of Valheim is to like keep exploring more and more dangerous regions that have more and more valuable resources. Uh, but like I said earlier, we're kind of ignoring that part of the game and just focusing on building. Um, they've got really cool mechanics for just creating structures out of wood. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. You can see over there we've got our... Um, I'll let you like look at the house. Were you still on when I built that? 
No, so uh, I think we built a little shed, this little shed over here to house our um, our our crafting bench. Oh my goodness! And then uh, you told me, oh, you, <laughs> I was like, oh wow, it looks like Berkeley's on fire. Oh, he's just actually on fire. <laughs> Okay, so this this will be my first time in here. Why do I have to jump at the top of my stairs? I'm sure glad it doesn't work like that in real life. <laughs> I did Whoa. a bad job building the stairs. Uh, who let this bird inside? And <laughs> I sure hope that's your bed. Um, well, this one's oh, my bed. That is okay. Well, oh, hey, it moved. Is that the tutorial bird? I guess. I claim this bed. I need a nearby fire to sleep in it, I guess. Oh, man. Okay. Nope. Let me build a fire. Yep. All right. Yeah, it won't let me. All right. So this is Hugin. I don't know if you introduced Hugin already. I zoned out for a second. No. Um, Hugin is the tutorial bird. Tells you many things that you need to know and will appear all over the place around you as you go throughout the world. Okay. There should be a campfire close enough to your bed to use it now. Yes. I, I can awesome. lie down now. This bed is awesome. It's like eight feet long. <laughs> Great, because we're like seven feet long. Yeah. <laughs> you feel rested. Comfort level set to four. I wonder what that would be like in real life to feel rested. I, I just love it when I have a good long sleep and my comfort level gets set to four. <laughs> I really thought that would make it morning. Maybe it's about to be morning. Um, I can see stars and also a gigantic glowing tree. Okay, funny story about that. Uh, my team at work played Valheim together. That was my introduction to this game. And like four or five of us were playing for a good hour. And then my boss jumped on and the first thing she said was, wow, that tree is beautiful. And we all looked up and none of us had noticed it in our hour <laughs> of playing. We were just so focused on, you know, what was immediately uh, on uh -huh. the horizon. What's Didn't in front of up. you? I mean, the you really have to Viking's look. Viking's going to bike. All the way up. Yeah. Ahead. I think I think Vikings prefer the term bicyclist. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. Okay. Um, should we get to it? Yeah, let's get to this. Uh, full disclosure, I think we played this together exactly a month ago. And uh -huh. then... Um, like a half hour, maybe. Yep, so I I barely know how to do anything. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. So we're just going to be build a big old house. <laughs> um, and it's going to be a little tricky because I found out while building this little hut that this game has like gravity in a way that Minecraft does not. Uh, if you build stuff that doesn't make sense, it'll just start falling over. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to have to be a little methodical, you know, make a foundation and then move up. Uh, okay. But I believe in us. We can do it. That, that makes one of us. <laughs> um, let's see. You're kind of low on health. I, let me toss you some food. I have a bunch of boar meat. I don't know how to cook it though. Okay. Um, just. Ooh. I learned how to cook. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy to burn things on accident, so just like try to collect those every little while until it's cooked. Um, one thing I will say about this game is it's very easy to die, um, and so you just kind of have to lean into that being part of the appeal. <laughs> uh, the first time I played, the first thing I did was chop down a tree. <laughs> you just destroyed it. I, I didn't know how to get it out of the thing. Um, <laughs> on a keyboard, it's E. Ah, uh, okay. I tried pressing that and it said um, no room. Maybe oh, I had the that wrong meant that it wasn't selected. done cooking. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, look, some animals. Oh, I scared the deer away by missing it with an arrow. Sorry. That's okay. We can chase it down. Get over here, deer. 
What? Do, why are we chasing this deer? Um, I just saw it. I, it's not. <laughs> we don't need to. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm. I'm already um, committed. Okay. So the first time I played this game, I chopped down a tree and it fell on me and smushed me and I died. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've died by just being overwhelmed by monsters. You know, that's pretty typical. Died. One time I was sprinting when I came up on a hill and I jumped at the peak of the hill and then died from fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, so don't sprint and jump at the same time, probably. Um, I When I was first making a wooden house... I wanted to see if I could build a campfire inside it. So I Googled to see if like campfires would burn down your house. Turns out they don't, but you can asphyxiate in this game <laughs> uh, if you build a campfire in an enclosed space. So just very interesting things that they chose to simulate here. Um, I am all for it. I am as well. I uh, My first death was actually getting... Maybe it was getting gored by a boar. My second death was walking into a house that had a beehive in it. It was like a oh. ruin. And uh, I didn't know what was going on because you can't see the bees. And suddenly there was poison all around me and I tipped over and died. Oh no. Berkeley, just quick update. Deers uh -huh. are fast and I am not. And I have not managed... Oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Okay. Finally got a hit in. Uh, I have killed it. Nice. Done. Also, this grayling wants some of this action, too. Grayling has been defeated. Okay. Uh, ooh. I got some stuff from that deer. How do I open my inventory? Tab. There we go. I have one cooked boar meat. Oh, it takes time to digest stuff so it'll actually heal you. That's kind of mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm back at the house. Nice. Ready to actually contribute. <laughs> um, I am just trying to build a workbench down here so we can actually construct stuff. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I was thinking we could just have a big front area here, and then like stairs going up, kind of the same construction as that hut, just on a bigger scale. Okay. Um, that probably didn't make any sense. Oh, it does. We're gonna have like tiers that work their way up the hill. I was mostly thinking like, oh shoot, what just happened? Okay. Um like elevated poles up to a deck porch kind of thing. Okay. And then the porch would go back and then, yeah, maybe another tier. I don't know. Let's, let's start with a porch and see where we go. Okay. I'm just going to throw some poles on the ground. Um, and then we can re adjust those later. I probably should be holding wood to be able to build things. Oh yeah. So in those chests, two of them are like almost completely full of wood. Uh, okay. There is a wood stack here. How do I get it into my inventory? Right now it's just showing a stack around me. Um, good question. Maybe unequip your hammer. Uh, oh, uh, right click. Okay. And then that should open up a building menu. Sorry, if you re-equip your hammer, I, I forgot that I'm looking at a delayed version. So equip your hammer. Oh, and I think right I got click it. And then take you to the build menu. Okay. Okay. Building poles. Okay, so you've got some poles here. Do we need more to provide a proper platform base? Yeah, eventually. I was going to start building the base, and then as it starts collapsing, build stuff under it. Okay. Um, I'm 
This game lets you build stuff through stuff, which is sometimes cool and sometimes annoying. So one of the weeks that we weren't able to stream, I was in Chicago with my wife, just as a tourist. And I had the craziest public transit experience of my life. <laughs> um, I, I love going on vacation and like learning how to do public transit in that city, or mostly having my wife learn how to do public transit in that city <laughs> and then teaching me. Yeah. Um, we did that in New York and we did it in Chicago. And it was, it was very fun, overall a great experience, except for this one experience. <laughs> so we were on a bus in just a very busy downtown area. And um, we were behind a car that was going really slow, like leaving too much following distance. Yeah. And our bus driver was getting so aggressive and mad about it. Uh, he kept like... <laughs> slamming on the brakes right behind this car, honking at it, just trying to get it to pull forward, which was a little bit obnoxious, but also I saw where he was coming from. There were a couple of times where like, we could have been at the next bus stop, but because the car in front of us had so much falling distance, we weren't able to get there. Yeah. Um, this car was a Tesla, and I suspect it was probably doing some kind of autopilot when it should not have been because it was in a very busy downtown city area. Oh, yeah. Um, so this goes on for like three stops, like maybe five or six city blocks. And our bus driver is just getting more and more angry, more and more aggressive. And finally we come up to this light and our bus driver just totally sideswipes the car, like takes off its uh, what? side mirror, <laughs> scrapes the side of the car, uh, just a horrible grinding noise, and then speeds off without stopping. So the Dang. driver uh, chases us down the street. Every time the bus stops, he gets out of the car and like slaps on the window, <laughs> yells at our driver. And everyone in the bus is like rooting for the bus driver, like totally took his side. Really? <laughs> Except for my wife and I. Dang. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to say anything. It's, it's a scary situation. So we just kind of minded our business until we got to our stop and then we rushed off the bus. And as we were getting off the bus, the Tesla just pulled in front of the bus and like blocked it into the stop and uh, wouldn't let the bus move. And then we walked away and minded our own business. <laughs> and that was the end. That is, that's wild. Uh, Berkeley, I see that you have done a thing where you have this pole inside of another pole. How yeah. do I do that? Um, I was targeting it at the ground, but based on like where I moved my cursor, it would still move the pole up or down. Um, I think if you tap E, it'll also switch to snapping based on the bottom versus the top. Okay. So that. Oh, that so then helpful. I could hop up on top of this and then put it down. Are you able to see my ghost? Uh like potential build object I am not okay all right I've made some stairs that instead of just making you jump on the last step make you jump on every step but you don't <laughs> actually have to push a jump button so I think that's superior <laughs> It's like playing hopscotch up an incline. <laughs> okay. Well, I will say that I'm not going to win any awards for my carpentry, but it's functional. <laughs> do you want me to see if I can replace those with? Please, please do. Also, <laughs> is this bringing back PTSD memories of your deck experience? 
Oh, no, I had a great experience with my deck. Was, okay. Uh, yeah, no hard feelings there. Okay. I, uh, I had to build a shed one time, and it was a very neat experience, but I will say that uh, especially if you're not used to building things all the time or taking things apart, depending on your uh, circumstance, it can be quite daunting. Mm. Yep, you you did it right. Good job. Thanks. So so you got to start from the top down in those circumstances so if i hit middle button with my hammer that'll uh -huh. destroy this yep and you'll get the materials back is it a 100 percent refund i think so um there might be like more complicated things later where it's only partial but i think with this wood stuff it's 100 percent. okay so yeah i think typically the strategy here is going to be like make some initial ones a scaffolding and let them be ugly and then once you have the deck in place, like re replace the posts. Okay. All right. Okay. It's a nice deck. It is a nice deck. Where do you want to go from here? <laughs> well, I think we should probably not do anything to finish it or renovate it and then rent it out for $6,000 a month. Oh, that is a great idea. Hello, would you like to live in one platform? <laughs> it is an open, open office plan. Spacious, open floor plan, studio apartment near you. Uh, one super fun thing about this game is that almost everything is its own skill, and you'll just level up in that skill based on how often you use it. So sometimes you'll like jump or sprint a little bit and you'll just level up in jumping or sprinting. <laughs> My favorite part of this game. So good. Um, okay, yeah, do you wanna go, I feel like we could go a little bit wider, like maybe just one more panel on each side. Yeah, it's uh, definitely needs more, it needs, it needs to be wider. I don't know whoever built this originally didn't see the vision, so. <laughs> All right. I will say, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the music of this game is incredible. Mm. And uh, I know I haven't really done it, but look at the view, man. The lighting's great. Very peaceful. Well, until you have to punch a, a grayling to death with your bare hands. Even then, they, they, something contemplative about the mobs in this game. Very like, <laughs> steady and deliberate. Berkeley, how would you feel about me expanding the front of this to have this uh, this staircase come up through the floor, and then oh, that'd be there's neat. like kind of like a is there glass yeah, in this that. game? Probably not. Vikings didn't have glass. <laughs> they probably did have glass. I don't know. I'm not a Viking expert. And this game also has portals eventually. <laughs> To make it far enough. I, I haven't made it past the second region, so I don't really know what uh what the potential is. Does it have portal guns? It does not have portal guns. <laughs> it quits and uninstalls. Okay, sometimes when I build stuff it shows red around the side of it. Um I think that just means you're not able to build in that spot. Okay. And you can scroll with your scroll bar to uh, rotate. I don't know if you've seen that yet. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I did not notice that. Okay. So I'm starting to get a little more familiar with this. Whoa, you can sit down? What the heck? The odds are truly endless in this game. 
Okay, this says I'm missing... Oh, yeah, I probably don't have enough wood. I don't! Okay, time for more... Getting some more wood. This is... This is cooler than Minecraft in some ways, because... Uh, let's face it, having everything be the same one unit wide block restricts your architectural uh, freedom a little bit. Yeah, it sure does. I also feel like this game, building is just like cheaper. I don't know, you don't have to spend as much time gathering resources as you, as you would in Minecraft compared to the amount of time you get to spend building. Yeah. So I've, I've run into some ground here. Yes. Are you okay with a little uh, two-tiered room? Yeah, definitely. This is like, I don't know what the purpose of this building is yet, but I will say that this feels very, um, like maybe maybe the front room that you entertain people in. Okay. I don't know. Or maybe we should section off this entryway so we have a mud room. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Oh, I thought I'd run out of wood again already, but I actually ran out of hammer. <laughs> Let's go repair my hammer. Oh, man. I hate it when I run out of hammer. Honey, can you go ask the neighbors if we can borrow some hammer? Okay, I vote. I vote that it is bedtime. That you make a compelling case. <laughs> All it took was one vote. <laughs> I mean, there's two of us, so once you voted, our options are deadlock or agreement. Oh no, my bed needs a nearby fire. Could have sworn we had one. Somebody destroyed it when they were cooking. I don't know who did it. But... No, it just ran out of wood. <laughs> Does chat, anybody... what's new with you? Oh, go ahead. No, uh, I, I do want to know what's new with chat. I was going to ask chat if anyone knows what the spinning T symbol in all the loading screens is. But uh, oh. the answer to that is probably no, we don't know, Jared. I think oh. it might be a representation of Mjolnir. M M Mjolnir? Ah, uh, the, the hammer of Thor. Yeah. I have a relative who is a Norse pagan. He, like worships Odin and Heimdall and Thor a little bit um, and yeah he, he's got a lot of iconography that looks similar to that I don't know yeah. if it's that specific hammer or if uh, there's others uh, can I ask do you know how they got into that um, I do know a little bit uh, yeah he like a lot of Christians describe he was at a low place in his life and felt like he had a manifestation from Norse gods and uh, then got into a community where he lives of people that uh, go into the woods and perform rituals and share their experiences together. It's yeah. pretty neat all around. Not for me, but it um, seems like it's been really good for him and uh, has a cool community around it. Yeah, interesting. I guess I didn't realize that that was like still practiced, but I guess, you know, a lot of religions are super old at this point and it's, they're still around. So, yeah. Um, Berkeley, there's a support here. That's like maybe six inches off the ground. Does it have to touch the ground all the way? Oh, probably. Good okay. call. Um, do you want to fix that or should I? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. But Barma says chat or Chad. I don't care how Chad's doing. <laughs> I want to know how chat's doing. Oh, that didn't work right. Yes, I leveled up and jump again. I'm going to check. Does it mean you can jump higher? I think it means it uses less energy. Oh. So one day oh, no, you can... no, you're right. It is jump height. I'm so excited for you to be just Michael Jordaning it all over the... 
the house. I guess the single house. I was going to say the village, but only two people. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> All right. We have a support in place. Um, Jared, we uh, kind of have a tradition of talking about games other than the one that we're playing. <laughs> and you have gotten me into Middle Earth Shadow of War. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so imagine if you wanted to tell a story flavored like Lord of the Rings with the names and places of real Lord of the Rings things, but completely not the story that actually takes place in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That is this game. Uh, it's a, I guess, a third-person um, stealth slash action adventure game. It's got story elements, but it is open world in most ways. Do you think that that's fair, Berkeley? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say pretty open world. Um, other open world games that I've played have been like really peaceful worlds with like little dungeons and skirmishes and stuff in between. Ah. This one is an open world where the entire world is a battlefield from what yes. I've seen. Yes. Yes. There are like a ton of different fortresses basically in in Mordor and your job is to go through all the fortresses and kill the orcs and also brainwash the orcs using your a uh, ring made by Celebrimbor, who's an elf who made a good ring, and you become the Bright Lord and brainwash orcs and use them to beat Sauron is essentially the way that it works. And mm, Obama <laughs> says chat is great. Chat is sore from working out too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Good luck. Good luck, chat. Okay, sorry, continue. I don't know, you're good. Uh, I will say right off the bat, it is over-the-top gruesome in its fighting. And uh, I still think it's over-the-top. I wish I could tone it down a little bit because it really goes quite hard. Uh, much harder than necessary. But overall, really, really enjoy it. Uh, if you've ever played any of the Assassin's Creed games, it has a similar... Um, stealth mechanic to those games and basically you can sneak around and combo together all these different moves to take down orcs and fight orc nemesis 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 I don't know what the plural of nemesis is <laughs> in case nemesis that wasn't clear um, nemesi nemesi and one cool feature of the game so each fort has an army and there's different ranks of orcs there's like the run of the mill basic grunt orc and there's tons of those all over it's impossible to kill them all off of the map they replenish faster than you can destroy them unfortunately I did try mm -hmm. uh, and then there's actual captains and they are uh, not fully unique but they are kind of algorithmically generated cool uh, orcs with with uh, different cool abilities. And uh, as you go through fighting them, they have different strengths and weaknesses that you can tailor your uh, weapons and abilities to target. Um, and you can either kill them for gear or you can recruit them to fight for you as you go through the game. And I don't know if, if you've seen this yet, Berkeley, but sometimes you think you've killed them off and they'll come back and uh, everything that you've done to them up to that point will tie into to, uh, how they uh, interact with you and what happens to them as they develop. And uh, as, as you kill enemies, obviously you get stronger, but if they kill you they get promoted. So if a regular run-of-the-mill orc kills you, they become a captain. If the captain kills you, they either level up or they become a 
um, war chief, and if a war chief kills you, they become a stronghold uh, leader. So there's like a tiered hierarchy, and these these orcs can betray you um, or fight alongside you, and uh, it's just a weird mix of like imagine playing Risk, except you're actually fighting the battles that you're rolling on in Risk. Um, I don't know. It's a cool game. Uh, it went on sale a couple weeks ago to nine dollars with all the DLC, and I think it's really worthwhile. Again, I can't emphasize enough. It is very gruesome. Um, mm. <laughs> it's gruesome. It's it's sword fighting and dagger fighting and and uh, a little bit over the top. But um, if you are interested in getting into the Lord of the Rings world and playing kind of a fun slasher stealth strategy game. I've really enjoyed it and I would recommend. Nice. Yeah. Good summary. Yeah. I don't know if I've played a game that is so focused on like battles. Like you get to feel like a hero. You're playing as a ranger, like an Aragorn style character. Yeah. Um, and so you're you're definitely special, but you're also just like running through a battlefield, and you can have some impact on it, but you not. It also feels like a world is happening around you, um, in a way that I think a lot of games have tried to do, but this one feels more successful, I guess, than uh, other times I've seen. Yeah, I I would agree that it it really does feel like the world is happening around you because you just there's so much going on that you can't actually um like obviously through the story mission you begin to approach victory but uh largely you're not going to be able to make you know a huge difference as just one person you have to do a lot more work to uh i don't know build that stuff the the first map uh, story arc is especially that way where it very much is focused on the uh, concept that you can't um, save the initial area you start in um, on your own. So yeah. Um, anyway, I, th I think that's all I have to say about it. The, the name is Middle Earth Shadow of War. There's a couple different versions. The one I've played is I think came out a couple years ago, 2021 maybe. Um, and yeah, a lot of fun. Maybe we'll stream that. Probably won't stream that, but, but, uh, do you know if it has multiplayer? You know, I don't, um, I know that there is an online component. Uh, if, if an orc kills you, um, sometimes other folks are given a opportunity to avenge you online for certain rewards. Oh, so that's an element but i i don't i haven't seen any other uh player controlled characters during that okay berkeley i have to ask is this i mean it feels almost like we have a performance venue now you know <laughs> well you mentioned earlier that you didn't know the purpose of the building yet which i think is a really cool perspective on building things that like yeah kind of wait until a purpose makes sense uh sure viking concert hall why not <laughs> they only play immigrant song <laughs> so i was just kind of thinking i would build stairs until i had gotten clear of the hill and i have just now accomplished that and realized it took way longer than i thought it would i just so, beautiful I, yeah we could kind of build this way like make a I, can't, I don't know how to show you what i'm thinking about make a room over here and one on the other side okay um i don't know maybe we can make part of the staircase kind of like backtrack on itself and make rooms up here oh what are you thinking yeah i i don't know but i'm i'm really enjoying it <laughs> cool <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I'm really just kind of in a in a follow the 
follow your heart's desire as far as like, oh, what do you think the next step is? Maybe we don't need a plan. Maybe we just build as the fancy strikes us. Okay, I'm then I'm just gonna build. I'm gonna see what happens if I make this staircase back, go back on itself and see if I can make a little room up here. I like that. I just, <laughs> can I say, I feel so supported right now. I'm just really enjoying this building experience. Yeah. yeah. I think that you probably tried to play Minecraft this way with me when we were in high school, and I <laughs> was just not chill enough to do that. <laughs> so I apologize for uh, oh, it's taking all this good. long. I, so we used to play on this big server that I actually have a, a copy of the map. I found it on a torrent service. Somebody, when the server closed down, somebody copied the whole map with all of the stuff that our friend group had built in it. Um, and everybody else was building these crazy structures or like really intricate auto farms. Like Anders would do that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you were building this amazing hotel that had all these perfectly preserved ores built into the walls of the hotel. So it looked like it was like somehow grew out of the stone around it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I grew a jungle tree, put some wood around it. And then just ran around. <laughs> I I really liked your jungle tree. It kind of had Ewok village design or Ewok village structure, but with like, it felt like Chinese architecture motifs. Yeah, that's actually that a great way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was very much that way. And, uh, I still do that when I play Minecraft. It's just, I really like me the big trees, man. You know what? I still follow that same, or parts of that design when I play Minecraft as well. I uh, Every base I make, I make a garden roof. Um, which, and that hotel that I made was the first time I did that. Yeah. Yeah, the, just to give you guys an idea of how crazy it was that Berkeley did that, you can't normally get whole blocks of ore without weapons that have a very specific enchantment on them. And it's very hard to do that because especially in that time, it was just random luck of the draw what you'd get. Mm. And uh, the fact that you were able to do that kind of is mind boggling. It might be fun for one of our streams to actually go through that map and like show everybody. It's kind of like an archeological yeah, dig almost. Okay, so we have a platform. This is the this is the heckling platform specifically. <laughs> That's for those two old guys in the Muppets. <laughs> that, that is, you know, just just left of stage, up in the up in the box seats. All right. Uh, is there in Minecraft you can crouch and then like build off the side of a thing that way? Oh, I don't know if that's a thing here. Um... Alt. Let me see if I can find controls anywhere. And toggle friendly fire. That would be fun. <laughs> Boxing. You match. can only toggle it for receiving friendly fire, though. You can't toggle <laughs> it for giving. Uh huh. Oh, here's what I'll do. This will fix it. There we go. Do you get what you needed? Yeah, I just uh, jerry-rigged the solution. Nice. Brickley, you, you've been doing some reading, as usual. Mm, yeah, uh, I am so close to my annual reading goal. My, my goal every year is to read 20 books, which is not a lot. That's a lot by a me. lot of people's standards. I don't think I've read uh, 20 books this year. I'm, I'm on 19 now, so I'm feeling pretty confident for my 2023 yeah, goal. You got two months left. Yeah. Yeah, the most recent one I read, though, was a big surprise to me. Um, it was a collection of George Orwell essays. And I picked it up because the title of the collection was Why I Write. And I enjoy creative writing, and I enjoy learning why great writers write 
Um, but that turned out to not be what most of the essays were about. Um, a lot of them were about George Orwell's political leanings, which oh, I found really interesting to read about because, so his most famous book is 1984. And I have heard people of all political persuasions invoke that book. And yeah. usually to say that their enemies are Orwellian. I shouldn't say enemies. But they're, 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 whoever they're disagreeing with at their the time. Their opponent. Yeah. Is Orwellian. So I was curious to see like uh, what Orwell actually believed. And turns out he's just full democratic socialist. Interesting. Um, I, it was kind of refreshing and kind of surprising to just hear how frankly he talked about ideas that I think would be considered pretty extreme in today's climate, but at the time were more acceptable. Um, so he was writing this in the 19th, late 1930s and maybe early 1940s. So during World War II, um, fascism was new, communism was less new, but pretty new. And just the world was changing really fast. And I think people were more willing to engage with kind of, ex I don't want to say extreme, because they weren't at the time, but I don't know. Different ideas? Yeah, different ideas. Hammer um, broke, how fix hammer? What was that? I broke my hammer, how do I fix it? Um, go to the workbench that has a cover, and okay. then there's a little repair button, and you can click that as many times as you want. It'll repair all the tools in your inventory. Oh, you know what I did instead? I crafted what? a new one. Good times. Oh, oops. Well, that also works. Okay. Dang. Okay. Anyways, so. So just for a little taste, um, first of all, he's very upfront about the fact that England was losing World War II at the time, and he says that it's because, um, one, the ruling class was not qualified to be ruling. They were just like holdover from monarchy days, uh, which I think is a fair assessment, and. Also, that the government wasn't willing to like step in and control industry. I, you know a lot more about World War II than I do, but Orwell was saying that um, Hitler had been able to nationalize a lot of industry, and because of that, Germany had just all this military might, and England was not willing to do that. They were like letting merchants decide what was profitable, and um, that was causing them to lose World War II. And then also the fact that there was so much income inequality that like the masses didn't have good reasons to be fighting. Um, like, those were his main concerns with why England was losing World War II. So, so and, would you oh, say ahead. that that's like uh, the masses did not politically support fighting because of the, because they didn't have a vested interest in it at the time? Is that, is that, that his argument? He, he said that, well, so it sounded like people were pretty anti-Hitler, except for some of the, like, business people at the top, um, who would profit from fascism more than they would from communism. So, that like, they were more concerned with stopping the USSR than with fighting Germany. Yeah. You, even in 1940, like, after the war was well underway. Um, but that, so, like, people were... The common people were against Hitler, but didn't have a reason to believe that they would be better off or even be okay after the war, and that that was like that that was bad for morale. Because no matter how much you hate what's going on in another country, if you're not sure that you're going to have food on your plate in a week or a month or a year, that's going to hurt your incentive to fight. Yeah. So not that people didn't support the war at all, just that they didn't support it enough. I Interesting. Have been his stance. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say that I think, um, especially coming off, you know, World War One, where it was just kind of a lot of senseless death, um, that I, I think that that kind of makes sense for that to be the feeling at the time I don't know anyways go ahead the thing that surprised me the most was like the specific policy recommendations that he had um, so he was in favor of nationalizing a lot of industry and a lot of just like 
assets that kind of passively make value. So any sort of like mineral mines, any sort of docks, and most land. He's, he said that no one except the government should be allowed to own more than 15 acres of land in the country and less in like urban areas. Interesting. Um, and then he was also in favor of just a like income ratio cap. Basically, there'd be a maximum salary that was 10 times minimum wage. So in America today, that would be seven twenty-five, seventy-two, $72 an hour, which is like between one hundred and fifty and two hundred thousand dollars a year, I think. Yeah, I should have done the math on that. Well, sounds so, about right. Not a ton. Um, so, I, like, that would mean like that would mean a big incentive for people to increase the minimum wage if that was passed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I've talked with people. I've probably talked with you about supporting that at a company level. Like yeah. requiring that no company can pay its top employees more than, I don't know, 20 times the lowest paid employee. But to have it at a national level and that low of a ratio was crazy to me. Anyway, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, after hearing Orwell invoked so many times throughout my life, uh, just seeing what he actually believed it was cool. Um, that specific essay was called The Lion and the Unicorn, if you're interested in reading it. I should also mention that he was very anti-imperialist. He, In the early 30s, he was a British soldier in India um, and came out of that with just a lot of anti-imperialist sentiments, which I think was kind of ahead of its time. Yeah, certainly, certainly for that era. Wow. I don't know. Maybe I should take that back. People have been against imperialism for a long time, but um, it was also something that was highly propagandized as being some great thing, right? Mm. So it's, I don't know. I, I'm sure you can find examples of both going back a long time, but but not something that the government was willing to accept, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I think the land ownership limits are are a fascinating one because, well, it it, it kind of digs down into the discussion of like, what are your rights as a person? Like, if you have the, if you have the financial uh, ability to to purchase this at the market price, is it your right to or not? And uh, you know, how do you? How do you approach regulations versus freedoms? Um, and I think, you know, I, I would describe the ideas we talked about. I haven't read the book, so I don't really know where Orwell's coming from. But it sounds like it is kind of a reaction to the excesses that he was seeing in his life and had lived through. Um, and I think we're kind of in this in the same boat as well today, where like we know that the system is being abused um, and we kind of have to decide like, you know, did I just break something by falling onto it? I don't think so. There's a little animation and sound that sounds like it, but uh, I don't think it actually does any damage. Huh. Some of these things are damaged, it seems like. Oh, really? I don't know. I mean, if, if they're at half a yellow bar and I hit them and they're at full, does that mean I'm fixing it? Oh, I never noticed the yellow bars. I don't know. Huh. Ah, anyways. Oh, no, I'm nervous. Yeah, uh, some, some interesting ideas. I'm curious to see how our society will answer them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in support of a, a, of a pay ratio cap, um, especially for businesses making over a certain amount of money uh, or, you know, over a certain number of employees in size. Mm. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, it's hard to... hard to write legislation that will work well for every case, but I, I think that something like a 20 times or a 40 times cap still allows enough incentive from the quote-unquote free market 
to uh, to make it worth risk and sacrifice for people. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, people who are going to innovate um, in in a real sense, instead of just you know whatever marketing. Uh, or drop shipping might become trendy in the next 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where things will go. It's as somebody who lives kind of in the countryside, I could see myself enjoying living on, you know, even 40 acres. But I think it's important to point out that England had and has a lot less land uh, availability as a small island country. So I think that's an, an interesting example that, that, you know, even the neighborhood we grew up in Berkeley actually really benefited from some similar ideas where you, you can't um, expand the urban area outside of a certain um, limit and you're protecting nature and you're protecting farmland. And that, comes with a cost right your your houses are are constrained so prices are going to be a little higher um but in my opinion we had a lot of access to some great agricultural products you know the farmer's market where we grew up was amazing and uh i don't know if we could have had that if we didn't have the urban growth boundary so yeah it'll be cool to see what our generation decides to do with that uh, and and those other ideas. All right, I'm having a hard time seeing again. Yeah, same. <laughs> <Should we go laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> I died oh. by running down the stairs too fast. Oh no. It's realistic to be fair. <laughs> oh, it looks like we're pretty much out of time anyways for today. Yeah, is it okay if we sleep and then just show what we've done so far? Yeah, for sure. Lighting's better. Well, are you able to sleep while I'm dead? Yeah, okay. Um, oh, it looks like you're back. I just need to figure out how to put my hammer away. Okay. Well, as we wrap up... Uh, let us know what you thought of Valheim. Um, let us know if we should play this one more. Is it interesting? But Parma says, I will sleep while you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paparma. Um, you can open up this headstone and get all your inventory back. I'm so glad that graves don't glow like this naturally. <laughs> Could you imagine? But Brahma says, pretty cool game. Nice. Cool, yeah. I never know, like, if stuff is going to be as interesting to watch as it is to play. But that's why we talk about Orwell's essays and crazy bus drivers in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, and I will say, uh, we built way more than I expected to be able to. The, the resource gathering to resource using ratio is pretty impressive in this game yeah I th we spent more time building than we did gathering resources which is cool uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't think that's ever been true in minecraft and then no, like the amount no. that we built in just an hour yeah cool um sweet i like where this is going let's do it again yeah yeah and uh you know if you're if you're just joining us for the first time or if you're watching this on youtube we stream most Tuesdays. Um, you can follow us on Instagram or you can follow us on Twitch, which is where we're streaming this. Um, if you check the description on YouTube or go to our about page on uh, Twitch, you will find a link to all of our other places, the places you might not be or, place, or places you are. Um, but you can follow us and get updates and catch us again live so you can ask us questions and or roast us depending on your mood <laughs> and how dumb we're being yep all right. all right thanks everyone yep see you next time
Bye. Bye.